Okay, so I got the new Apple TV 4K on Friday and it is absolutely great. I've got a stereo pair of HomePods and so I can get Dolby Atmos through it as well. Uh, but the thing I wasn't expecting to be able to do is to be able to play analog audio through it and it works with my stereo HomePods and it sounds great. If I drop the stylus, Now I can't play any more than that for copyright reasons because this video is monetized, but I will do another video just playing some music uh, through the HomePods just to show that it's all working. It works with my cassette deck, which you can see at the bottom there as well. Pretty much any analog source uh, will plug in. Now the turntable you use would need to either have a preamp uh, built into it or you would need a separate preamp. Uh, some turntables have a lower line signal and so you need that preamp to be able to plug it through uh, in effectively like an auxiliary socket. So it's plugged through my TV in the red, white and yellow sockets. Uh, now obviously a turntable only has the red and white because it only has stereo, there's no video. Uh, so I've plugged video from my little recorder box. So if you look down the bottom here where you can see the blue lights, uh, that's got just the yellow coming out of that and going into the back of the TV and then the red and white is going from the turntable. The reason you do that is if you don't send video, the TV just doesn't accept it as a signal. So you have to put some sort of video through it. So that could be a Raspberry Pi, uh, it could be anything with uh, an old style video output. And if you've got SCART on something, you can use a SCART to phono adapter. There's all sorts of ways around it. But this Sony TV has Android, and if I wanted to not have this display, I mean, if I put something like a Raspberry Pi on there, I could, I could choose whatever I want as a background. I could get it scrolling through different things, uh, showing images, whatever. Um, I, I might try something with some VU meters because I thought that might look quite cool. Um, but on this Sony TV also, if you don't want any of that, if you press the action menu, you get this appear at the top, and we have an option for picture off. And as you can see, there's no picture on the screen now. I'm gonna put it back on anyway because there's lots of reflection. But yeah, so as long as you've got some sort of video source going through that, whether it's component or whether it's composite, either will work fine. But this also works just like a normal soundbar uh, that would use Arc. So basically anything that's plugged into the TV, whether that's a games console, a recorder, anything you want, analog or digital, uh, as long as your TV can accept an analog signal. Uh, so if I change the input now and I go to UView, which is uh, Freeview, which is our, our live TV in the UK. Again, you can hear that that comes through, so all the signals are coming through fine. I'm going to have to move it off that because I probably can't leave it on that signal. I was playing FIFA last night on my Xbox Series S and that was coming through and the sound sounded really, really good. Okay, so let's try and make this a bit clearer. Now, one of the things the TV needs to have enabled is something called Consumer Electronics Control or HDMI CEC. Some different companies call it different things, but uh, it amounts to pretty much the same thing. It means that your TV remote control will do certain functionality with the HDMI device that's plugged in. So I can control my Apple TV's menu with the buttons on my TV remote control. But also if I turn on my Apple TV or my Apple TV remote, the TV comes on. Now mine was disabled because on some Sony TVs, mine included, uh, they tend to turn themselves off fairly randomly with CEC on. But you need CEC enabled to be able to do this. Now on mine, it's in the settings menu. So if I go to settings at the top and go to external inputs, you can see there's a function here called Bravia Sync Settings. And this Bravia Sync control at the top needs to be on. Once that's on, you should be okay. So then what we need to do is switch over to the Apple TV. And with the Apple TV remote, we need to press the home button, scroll down to settings, you can see the cog there and press okay. Video and audio. Go down to default audio output. You can see mine set to living room, which is my stereo pair of HomePods, and also play television audio. When you click on that, what it's gonna try and do is connect to the arc section on your TV, which is basically the bit, audio return channel, which sends the audio out through the HDMI. So even though video is going from the Apple TV to the TV, it can also send audio out separately to the Apple TV, which is then sending it to the HomePods. It's the same way as the soundbar works. Once that's all set up, anything I do on here will come through the HomePods. So if I start clicking on something. And again, I can't keep it playing. So let's go home. And let's show you the direction of travel where everything goes. So my turntable has a red and white connection coming out of it. And that is going into the back of the TV. 
But I also need a video source for that, and I'm using the Freeview box right at the bottom here. I've got a yellow cable going all the way up into the back of the TV. So I'll show you the back of the TV now. Here you go, so these are the connections, and the yellow one is coming from my recorder, but it could be any source that outputs video with a component output. Or you could use the other two. There's a blue and a red one there. If you use blue, red, and green, that's slightly better quality, that's component. Uh, but the audio, the turntable, is the red and the white one you see there. So that's how the sound is getting into the TV, uh, but then how is the TV sending it to the Apple TV and then the HomePod? So basically it's going out of the ARC connection to my Apple TV box, which then wirelessly sends the sound to the HomePods. Now you may not have exactly the same connections on the back of your TV, but it should work with pretty much every TV in this case. Uh, so you definitely need that ARC connection on the HDMI. Without that, it's definitely not gonna work, but I think pretty much every TV in the last 10 years has had that. Uh, the analog connections, the red, white, and yellow, uh, may look different on your TV. It may say AV next to it, or it may say component next to it. It may even be two little tiny connections. Sometimes it's a little tiny green, or a yellow connection, or a black connection, which looks like a three and a half millimeter headphone socket like you'd have, uh, or like we used to have on most phones. If you've got that sort of connection, you need a little breakout cable that looks like this. It should come supplied with your TV, but some TVs don't and they can be bought separately. But that allows you to put old style equipment, so things you would have plugged into an old amplifier back in the day, uh, it's that sort of connection that you need. But also pretty much every HDMI device will work. So basically if you plug in an HDMI device, say you had something like a Chromecast or an Amazon Fire TV or an old games console but was still HDMI, all of those would plug into the back of the TV and then the TV would send the sound back to the Apple TV, which would then send the sound to the HomePods. So you are going to get stereo sound in this instance from older equipment, whether it's HDMI or analog. So as I said before, I'll show another video just basically playing some analog sources through. But this is really a great feature and I definitely didn't expect it from Apple. Uh, the HomePod keeps getting better and better. Uh, we are getting support for lossless audio with the Apple TV and also coming to HomePods in the future as well. It's just been announced, there was a bit of confusion about it, but it looks like that's coming as well. So even though the HomePods are discontinued, they are a great little hi-fi. For the price, they're really hard to beat and the, con the convenience is there. The Dolby Atmos support is brilliant. They sound great for movies and great for music. I really love my HomePods and uh, with the new Apple TV, it's got so much better. Anyway, I hope all this helps. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments. I'll try to answer them, but try and give details. So don't just say, my TV doesn't work, it's a Samsung or something like that. Just try and give the model number of the TV. Um, obviously, if it's HomePods and it's Apple TV, then I don't need any model numbers for those. So if you've got a stereo pair of HomePods and the 2021 Apple TV, the new one that's just come out, uh, then it should work with pretty much everything. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.